Console launches are an important time to show off what systems can do visually. In 2001, the GameCube was no different. While Luigi's Mansion and Wave Race Blue Storm were the big titles from Nintendo, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader from Factor 5 really showed what Nintendo's purple lunchbox was capable of. Now, while the game is still one of the best looking games to have ever graced the platform, is it still fun to play all these years later? That's exactly what we're here to talk about. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Today though, we're taking a look at Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader on the GameCube in this retro review. Rogue Leader features a very arcade-like feel and it's tailored specifically for the GameCube controller. Now, of course, control of the ship is handled with the analog stick, the A button is used for primary weapons, uh, B is for secondary weapons like proton torpedoes, stuff like that, X can change the view, and Y brings up the targeting computer. Now, the D-pad has kind of an interesting thing here. Uh, it basically allows you to give orders to your wingmen, so for example, to attack certain targets or to form up or something like that. Alternatively, when you're near death, you can also press any direction to have the onboard, onboard droid fix your ship. Now the analog triggers here, they also speed up or slow down your ship, you know, and also for the X-wing or B-wing uh, ships with these S-foils, a full press of the R button closes the ship's S foil, so making it makes it go pretty fast. Uh, the C stick here also is used to for like some slight camera movement or just to look around freely when you're in the cockpit view. Now everything here feels extremely tight, no matter which ship you're piloting. And I do think that each ship does have kind of like their own feel here as well. I mean, the X-wing is more of kind of like an all-around kind of vessel here. The A-wing is pretty speedy. The Y-wing is a bit slow, but it packs a bit of a punch with weapons. You know, stuff like that. You know, one other interesting touch uh, thrown in here at the controls uh, too has to do with just the standard fire button with A. Now, of course, when blasting enemies, you can hold down the fire button. You just hold it just to rapidly fire at your enemies, but it's a lot more effective to actually tap the button as shots will deliver more powerful blasts with each press. It's gonna have a little bit more time to charge up the lasers. Now, while I really do enjoy the gameplay and controls in Rogue Leader, I do have a few gripes here. Now, I mentioned before the ability to repair your ship with the D-pad, that's a thing, and I think it's a great idea. However, I think the window for doing this is extremely short. Having a little bit more time to make use of this would have made for a better overall experience. Now, another issue I have, which can be a little bit annoying, is it happens kind of like when in tight spaces, uh, when you have enemies kind of close on your tail. Like, this doesn't happen all the time, but occasionally when you are in situations like this, the camera will pan back from your ship with the intention of giving you kind of like a look at the enemy. Now, while I think this is a cool idea, I found this to be a little bit problematic in practice. This sometimes makes it difficult to judge your surroundings, resulting in accidental deaths. So, yeah, I mean, cool idea here, but it, eh, I don't know, I kind of wish it was just taken out of the game. Now, the missions on offer here range from scenes taken straight out of the movies to scenarios that would, or in maybe some cases kind of did, uh, appear in the expanded universe. Now, things here are varied and are usually pretty fun. You know, of course, the game does get quite difficult the deeper you get in. However, I think the upgrades to your ship, and I think just the, the fair difficulty progression here helps to keep things balanced. Now, a metal system is in place here that takes into account several different parameters, including clear time, accuracy, lives lost, and more. Now, the metals unlock points, which can be used to unlock a handful of secret stages and a couple of things like that. Now, of course, these days, if you're feeling a little bit impatient, you can just go straight to the game's passcode system and unlock things that way. And actually, you know, on the topic of unlocks, Rogue Leader even includes an unlockable making of mini documentary as well as commentary that can be ran uh, while playing the game, like for the stages and stuff. I mean, simply put, there's some really great secrets here in terms of stages, ships, extra content and stuff like that. Definitely something that you didn't see at the time or really even these days. Everything about Rogue Leader in terms of visuals and audio that is absolutely spot on. Factor 5's close relationship with Nintendo and their work on the GameCube itself put them in an advantageous position. Now the development of the game was pretty well documented, however it can't be said enough how impressive of a game that Factor 5 was able to put, uh, pull off in this short 9 month development period. To top things off, the game runs at a smooth 60 frames a second. The menus feature a slick look that resemble various ships from the original Star Wars trilogy. 
Now on top of that, video clips from the movie are playing in the background, which was an extremely nice touch for the time. Now things like this might not seem like a, a huge deal for modern games, but back in 2001, it was kind of a novelty. Not only that, but with the exception of The Phantom Menace, Star Wars was only available on VHS and Laserdisc at the time of Rogue Leader's release. So having these higher quality digital clips on the GameCube was really something special. Now, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader originally released in the GameCube slightly ahead of the November 18th, 2001 system launch. I actually picked up my copy of the game and a memory card on November 13th, 2001. And man, I poured over the instruction manual and pawed over that case multiple times a day leading up to the release. Now, of course, the game also saw a release in Japan on March 22nd, 2002, and was followed by a PAL release corresponding with the GameCube launch there. Now, you've probably noticed the Japanese box is a bit different from its Western counterparts, as the Death Star that was in the background there is replaced with Darth Vader, placed behind like the X-Wings and stuff like that. Now the reason for this was to probably make it absolutely clear what this game was about. Now while I think a lot of hero characters like Luke or Han are definitely known to Star Wars fans in Japan, one of the most iconic characters like Vader, usually like these characters with the masks and stuff like that are a little bit more popular here. and Maybe the thinking was that would just stand out a little bit more than just the Death Star. So I think that's what kind of went on here. Of course, the game itself is exactly the same outside of the Japanese voiced uh, localization and text that you'll find in the game. Rogue Leader was not only a great launch title for the GameCube, but also one of the best games that is available on the platform. Now at the time, and even years later, it served as a visual benchmark for what was possible in Nintendo's hardware that generation. The snappy controls, fast paced action, and excellent attention to detail make this game a treat to play even all these years later. There are a few minor niggles here and there, but it's still awesome. I mean, if you somehow haven't played this game, you definitely need to pick this one up immediately. Now if you're looking to go back to the game for the first time in a long time, you won't be disappointed. As always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, retro looks at games like this, and a whole lot more. Also, be sure to check out our website or consider supporting us on Patreon. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.